Hi and welcome to another NERPG tutorial. In this tutorial I will be demonstrating how to use the new character wizard to add this awesome free basic bandit from the Unity Asset Store as a playable character in your game, focusing on setting up the weapon attachments so that he can equip any weapon. And of course, since every bandit should have a cool camp, I will also be using this Ultimate Fantasy Creator Light asset, which is another free asset from the Unity Asset Store. If you don't already have a copy of any RPG, you can pick one up from anyrpg.org slash downloads in both Unity package format or from GitHub as free open source software. Let's get started with the demo. To keep this demo focused on the character creator, I have already used the NERPG New Game Wizard to set up a new game using this Bandit Camp 1A scene here that's included with the Ultimate Fantasy Creator as my first scene. I have also used the Template Content Wizard to install three pieces of content. I have installed the Enemy Faction Template Package. I have also installed the RPG Character Classes Template Package and the Knight Class Specialization Template Package. If you would like to know how to use the New Game Wizard or the Template Content Wizard, I will include links to tutorials for those in the video description. So, I've installed the basic bandit package and we have a basic bandit prefab and now we are ready to include this bandit as a playable character in our game. So we will start by going to the tools menu and go to NERPG wizard and new character wizard. We'll pull in the basic bandit prefab into the character model slot up here and be sure to choose the humanoid attachment profile as it will be installing attachments for us. We are going to click on add weapon attachments to make sure that those get installed and because this character has not had the arm bone selected we'll have to fill that in manually. This character has an arm bone that our character creator wizard has never seen before so it's couldn't find it. And in this case, the lower arm bone is what we're looking for. This is basically where the shield attachment is going to go. And so this bone is called lower arm L. So we're just going to fill that in. And if you're importing any other character and you notice that the bones are blank, then you can just go search whatever prefab you're using for the correct bones and then fill those in and the attachments will be filled in properly. In this case, the character name is just going to be Bandit and that looks good. I'm going to make sure that we set this as the default player character to ensure that when we start our game that this is the player that we're going to be playing with. The player also has some custom animations so we might as well fill those in as well. And those are in the animations demo scene. He has a walk animation so we'll move that into the move forward clip. He has a sprint animation. I know it says sprint jump, but he's not actually jumping, so it's just a sprint animation. We'll put that in the move forward fast clip. And he does have his own idle neutral stance, so we'll move that into the idle clip slot. That's basically all that we need to do for this character. So let's go ahead and click create. And then we can begin the process of setting up the weapon attachments properly. This will have added a prefab to our game bandit game prefab character directory. So let's go ahead and open that up. And what we're looking for here is these attachments. The attachments were automatically added to the bones that we specified in the new character wizard. And what they allow us to do is to have any weapons that are defined by the game automatically put into the right slot. So things that are 
defined in the humanoid attachment as left hand, we'll look for this bone called the left hand attachment bone. It's not really a bone, it's just a prefab. And to make sure it's positioned properly, I'm just going to check the sword here and then move it around so that it's basically sitting in the character's hand the way that I want, but what I want to do specifically is not actually move the sword. The sword's just a visual sort of indicator. What I want to do is actually move the attachment itself. So let's spin that around a little bit that way, and then a little bit this way, and then pull it down and a little bit forward and it looks like I have to rotate it back slightly. It's not quite lined up with his palm. There we go. That's getting a lot closer. We'll pull this down into his hand and maybe move it back a little bit. And it's still not quite perfect. I think maybe we want to move that up. potentially rotate it a little bit more back so that it's not poking through any of his fingers. And that's better now. I can move the grip up a little bit and that looks about right. That's about how we want to be holding that sword with his thumb wrapped around it. And actually this is backwards because this sword is reversed so Let's just rotate that 180 degrees so that the front of the blade is facing away from him. Next, we can do the shield attachment on the arm. So let's make that shield visible. And then we'll start rotating the shield attachment. And then it's kind of poking through his arm, so now we can move it around a little bit and play with the positioning. And that looks about right. I think if he had a shield in his hand, that's where it would go. And that's about how we would want it. Because when his forearm is forward, the shield will be facing down towards the ground properly. Let's move down and look for the other attachments. We have the other sword over here, so we'll make that sword visible. And then remember to click on the attachment, so we're actually moving that attachment rather than the sword. And then we want to spin that around and get the front end of the sword facing forward. Then align that with the way that his hand is positioned. And we can pull it down and up a little bit here. That's actually pretty good. Maybe move it up just a little bit more so his thumb is wrapped around the top of the grip there. And that's looking pretty good from basically all angles. So that gets the left hand and right hand attachments and the shield done. Now let's go ahead and do the spine attachments. So I'm just going to select everything in the spine attachments here. Realistically you don't have to. Um, you could pretty much just select like the shield and the wings are some good ones. If those two are working then everything else is. But let's just turn everything on so we can see all of the different weapon attachments. And what these are are basically just previews to let you know, you know, if I equip a quiver, this is where it's going to go. If I equip a battle axe, that's what it's going to look like. If I equip a crossbow, this is where it's going to go. And this is all pretty good. Um, the shield attachments basically don't need much done by default. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the shield pivot, maybe move it back a little bit so that any shield that he does wear isn't stuck halfway through the middle of his back. It'll just sort of float a little bit behind him there. Next we'll go down to the hip attachments and this is for where weapons that go on his hip are when they're sheathed. 
So I'll open that up and on the left hip pivot, we'll just make everything visible. Those are all in a pretty good spot already. And then I'll go down to the right hip pivot. Alt click to open all those up. Select everything here and make those all visible. And then I'm just going to move the hip pivots out slightly. I want to make sure I'm moving them globally because I want them to go just straight sideways. That looks about good for that side. And then the left hip pivot, just move that out slightly. And I am mostly pretty happy with that. The only thing I'm going to do maybe is just move the entire hip attachments up a little bit so that the handles of these weapons are sort of more above his belt line rather than sort of hanging down at the crotch level. And this looks pretty good. If, um, if we equip weapons, they're going to go all in about the right spots now. So let's go ahead and just revert the visibility on all of those. Because otherwise, when we start the game, then all these things are going to be showing, and we don't really want that. So I'll revert the visibility on all the hip attachments. And then I will do the same for the spine attachments. Just go up to overrides here. Just revert all of those. I don't want to revert the transforms, of course, because we specifically want those transforms where we set them so that everything is in the right position. Otherwise, I would just be able to just click the revert all button rather than having to do these individually. And I'll go to the sword here, the right hand attachment, and just revert the visibility on that. And then up to the shield attachment, go to overrides, just revert the visibility on that. And then the left hand attachment, go to overrides and just revert the visibility on that. And now I can save the bandit and exit. And because I have already installed all of the character classes, then we should be able to just play with the bandit right away. Um, but what I want to do is just something for fun here. Because I installed the knight specialization, I'm going to go grab the unit spawn node specialization and I'm going to grab the knight and sort of stick him over here in front of this tree. Our knight is going to come out and he's going to challenge our bandit to a duel because of course bandits are, you know, hiding in a bandit camp with everything that they stole from everyone. So, you know, we got to clean up that skullduggery, of course, right? And I'm also going to need to go into the resources and just make the knight into an enemy with that enemy faction I installed. So we'll go to unit profile and specialization knight specialization unit and just set his faction name to enemy. And I just want to make sure that I have already baked the nav mesh because otherwise our knight won't be able to move. So I'll go to window AI navigation and yeah, it looks like I have a good nav mesh there. And the default spawn location is properly set. So our band is just going to spawn here underneath the tent. Let's go ahead and save that. And I want to make sure that maximize on play is selected. And go ahead and press play. So now when I click on New Game, you can see that because I selected all of the different character classes when I did the template, we can take a look at what this character looks like with a bow on, if I make him into a fighter, what he looks like with the ninja claws on, if I make him into a priest, what he looks like with the staff on, if I make him into a warrior, what he looks like with this two-handed axe, and finally, if I make him into a thief, which is 
people are probably the closest thing to a bandit than what he looks like with the daggers on, and that's pretty good. That is all thanks to the fact that we selected the humanoid and uh, put all these weapon attachments on him. So let's go ahead and start the game. And just make sure that everything is working properly. Good, I have my audio in here. I have this nice ominous music that I put in. And you can see that we're using the sprint animation from the package. It's a little weird. It looks like he's trying to sprint sideways there, but that's okay. And if I hit the slash button on the keyboard, then he's walking and he's using the proper walk animation as well. And you can see that he's doing his own idle. He's not doing the default idle from the NERPG package, so that's good as well. And then let's go outside here and challenge the knight. So of course, because we are a bandit, we're gonna stick some poison on our weapons, and then we are going to enable stealth. And now we can stealth over to the knight, and the knight is not going to attack us. And I think we'll start off the fight by doing a sneak attack on him as soon as we get close enough. And then maybe we'll try to pull off a backstab and see if we can defeat this knight. So sneak attack, and then stun him, and then backstab him. And uh-oh. We are not having a good time here. This knight is going to... Looks like he might just kill us. Of course he's going to kill us, because we're just a silly bandit not wearing any armor, and this guy's got a shield and lots of plate armor. But hey, that's what our bandit gets for being a bandit, I guess. So I hope you enjoyed that, and if you did, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the NERPG YouTube channel. And if there are any future tutorials that you would like to see, then go ahead and leave a comment below. And I will try to make uh, whatever tutorial you'd like to see regarding any RPG and how to configure it. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next video.